A focused Tyson Fury might be one of the most dangerous heavyweights in history. How often do we really get a focused Tyson Fury, though? Are we going to get a focused Tyson Fury in his fight against Alexander Usyk? Anything less than 100% focused Tyson Fury loses to Alexander Usyk. Usyk only knows how to win. That's what the man does. He's basically the DJ Khaled of boxing. All I do is win, win, win. That's Alexander Usyk. Well, you get more than 100% here on Deep Waters, only on Pro Box TV, which starts now. This is Deep Waters, only on Pro Box TV, where boxing's top stories are highlighted every single time we take a deeper dive into them. George Dimatelis alongside the champs, Pauli Malinaj and Chris Algieri. And to quote DJ Khaled, we the best. All right, let's talk about who might be the best in the heavyweight division because in about just over a month's time, Alexander Usyk, Tyson Fury, undisputed heavyweight championship, May 18th in Saudi Arabia. And Tyson Fury already starting a little bit of the, the trash talking, saying that cruiserweights cannot defeat the best heavyweights. We all know the history. Roy Jones Jr. and Vander Holyfield have made that jump up to heavyweight and done well. Paulie, what do you make of Tyson Fury and those words that he said about cruiserweights moving up and then his chances against Usyk, obviously? You know, it, it's interesting because he's got a point in that some of the best cruiserweights have tried their hand at, in the heavyweight division uh, and mixed results. You know, we've had some guys that have won world championships like uh, uh, Roy Jones Jr., um, who actually came up from way below even cruiserweight, yeah. but um, he actually came up from light heavyweight. But also we got uh, um, guys like David Hay, for example, who won a, heavy, a version of the heavyweight title but ended up losing against what Tyson Fury's saying, the best, right? At that time, Vladimir Klitschko was the best in the heavyweight division. Uh, Fury wound up beating Balua for the WBA heavyweight title, won a major world title, but nonetheless wasn't able to beat the predominantly, num the, by and large, the number one guy in the heavyweight division at that time. The only guy that really has done it so far has been Evander Holyfield. So everything that um, is, is being said by Tyson Fury, he's got a point. He's playing, I know he's playing mind games and everything else. And Fury and Usyk, I mean, might be the best cruiserweight we've seen since Holyfield. And so he might be the one who, ha who may have the next be best chance at beating some of the best heavyweights after winning an undisputed cruiserweight title. And realistically, that's why we're here. That's why we're talking about this fight. Yeah, exactly, champ. And, and, you know, Tyson Fury, yeah, like you said, he, he's making points that, that, that aren't off the wall. But if you talk about those, those guys, you're talking about the Roy Jones Juniors of the world, the Evander Holyfields, guess what? Usyk is another one of those very special guys. He has the ability. He has the wherewithal. He has the skill set. He's big enough, even for modern heavyweights, to be able to campaign at the, at the highest level in the heavyweight division. And listen, like I said at the open, man, this guy knows how to win. He finds a way to win. He doesn't know anything else. So if there is if there's an opportunity, if there's a chance for Alexander Usyk to find a way to win, he will. So yeah, I, I know Tyson is a great trash talker. You know, they're 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 going out there and they're putting this out there. They're trying to they're trying to dig into history. But listen, it's been done before. And as far as Alexander Usyk is concerned, if it's been done, I can do it too. Yeah, Tyson Fury talking about he wants to make this his era as the dominant heavyweight fighter in at this time period. But does he, if he takes down Usyk, does he become the dominant heavyweight? Is he the, the, the heavyweight that everyone is talking about when it comes to this generation? Yeah, I, I think so. I, I think this fight really would be for supremacy in, in the, the heavyweight of the generation. You know, you've had, with respect to Joshua and Wilder, you know, there is a possibility to get Joshua back in there with the winner. Um, if it's Usyk... I don't know. I mean, we, we, we've already seen Joshua come up short twice against Usyk, but I, li I personally like the way Joshua's been looking lately as far as the way his performances in the ring have been, have been rather sharp and destructive. Um, but, you know, if, if it's Fury, you make the Joshua and Fury fight for, who knows, the predominant, dominant, to become the dominant heavyweight in the, in the era. Who knows? But then again, if Joshua ends up beating Fury, then you can always say, oh, well, Usyk yeah. beat him twice. So you're still going to have that old BCS title game <laughs> logic where you, yeah. you, you, one, one way or another, you're never going to get a clear number one. But if Fury is able to beat Usyk right now, um, uh, I think he's he's the, by and large the top guy. And if Usyk is able to win this fight, he's, he's the, by and large the top guy. Especially if Usyk is able to win it. Because like mm. I said, he's already beaten Joshua. What yeah, boxing, boxing math is funny that way. It's like, oh, I beat this guy, but then this guy beat me. Um, it, it's a curious situation. These I think if, if, if Usyk wins this fight, if he beats Tyson Fury, I don't think anyone cares to see the Joshua fight. It might happen, um, but I don't think it, it changes. But 
if Tyson Fury wins, I think in order to be the dominant heavyweight of this generation, he has to fight Joshua and he has to beat him. Because at this stage, Joshua's a whole different guy now. He's like the Joshua of old. I, I, I literally fancy him against almost everybody in the world at this point. I could see him beating Tyson Fury. The only guy I can't see him beating is old Sandra Usyk. So if Tyson's able to get him out of, out of the way, um, I think that sets up a uh, mega, mega heavyweight showdown between Tyson Fury and Anthony Joshua. And I think the winner there... If it's Fury, then yes, we're looking at the most dominant heavyweight of our generation, um, hands down, bar none. Uh, but if then Joshua wins, then we got another curious situation. What do we do now? But um, I don't know. I don't know how much. Even, even if Joshua is to win, I'm sure Usyk's team is going to push for it. I don't know how much the, the fans would be clamoring to see a third match between those two guys. It just seems like it would be another another Usyk victory. All right. Time for a quick break here on Deep Waters. We'll talk about Alexander Usyk and his matchup against Tyson Fury here on Pro Box TV, your boxing channel. Wednesday Night Fights. On the next Wednesday Night Fight, April 24th, Ramon Cardenas returns to Pobox to steps up to the main event against Eduardo Ramirez. Live from the Probox Event Center in Plant City, get your tickets at ProboxTV.com or take your chances at the door. Wednesday Night Fights. And nothing like Wednesday Night Fights, the best life fight series in all of television, and it's only right here on Pro Box TV. All right, let's continue talking about this Tyson Fury, Alexander Usyk, undisputed heavyweight championship fight that's going to take place May 18th in Saudi Arabia. Let's look at it from the Usyk perspective, Paulie. What is Alexander Usyk's best strategy to win the titles and become undisputed? I think you're gonna have to. You're gonna need a multi-layered strategy here. You know, you can think about. You might be able to outbox Tyson Fury, and I, I wouldn't put it past Usyk to be able to outbox Tyson Fury. I actually might even expect it. But then, can you deal with the physicality of Tyson Fury? You know, how do you offset that? You know, uh, you have to use your legs a little bit more. Uh, you're gonna have, which, which we know Usyk does, does, does that and can do. But at this age, how good are Usyk's legs? They looked a little suspect in the Dubois fight. I personally think in the Dubois fight, the issue was the wet ring. But of course, you know, it's still a conversation point that has to be brought up. I will say this though, Usyk winning, like we were talking about before, makes him the best heavyweight of this era. He's beaten, he's beaten uh, uh, Joshua twice and, and it, he'll have beaten Fury. He won't have fought Wilder, but Wilder is pretty much faded at this point. If he does that, he becomes main, because now I'm thinking about what Tyson Fury's quote was, that you know, they don't beat the best heavyweights. Roy Jones never got in the ring with, um, with uh, uh, Lennox Lewis. Uh, David Hay tried to, get a, uh, tried to get in the ring with Vladimir Klitschko and came up short. Vander Holyfield, who everybody looks at as the best cruiserweight in history to go up to the heavyweight division, and that might very well be right, still yeah. didn't become the best heavyweight of his era. Lennox Lewis was the best heavyweight of that era. So if Usyk wins this fight, he becomes the best heavyweight of this era. He'll become the only cruiserweight to have won the undisputed cruiserweight champion and heavyweight championship, just like Holyfield did. But he'll actually be the heavyweight of his era as well, which would be a first. Yeah, Usyk, if he beats Tyson Fury, he will have beaten maybe the best two heavyweights so far in Joshua Mm -hmm. and Tyson Fury if he beats him. All right, Chris, what's your take on what Usyk has to do to win this fight? Listen, I mean, we, we, we've seen both guys. Uh, they've been under the microscope for, for a lot of their career, um, and we know what they do in the ring. Usyk is, is, a, is a tactician. He is a strategist. He cuts beautiful angles. He's uh, he is, is a, he basically uses the fundamentals of being a southpaw, and that's one of the, one of the knocks that, that Team Usyk has had on Tyson Fury that he is susceptible to some of the tricks that our southpaws can do. I'm um, thinking about uh, the, the Otto Valine fight where he got that big cut. Otto Valine is a southpaw. They say that he struggles with southpaws. And Usyk is the best heavyweight southpaw in the world today. He cuts those angles beautifully. He, he stays invisible by staying outside that lead foot, staying on the weak side, stays outside the lead foot, always wins the battle of positioning. He's very, very good at that. For him to do that against a guy like Tyson Fury, though, he's got to be on his P's and Q's all night long. 12 rounds is a very long time, and it's a very long time to spend time in a ring with a guy who's going to have a functional weight advantage of around 55 to 60 pounds. And Tyson Fury is a massive, massive human being, and he knows how to use his size. And it's not just that he's big. He's not a big lung bring heavyweight from the past. No, he is a big, athletic, slick, big guy. Um, he, he moves really well. He's got a good jab. He's got quick hands. 
Not the biggest puncher in the world, but he still gets knockouts. But he's very physical, and he knows how to use that. That dirty boxing on the inside. He likes to use his hands. He'll push you around. He'll wrestle on the inside. He'll lean on you. Every time that Usyk is, is going to bend at the waist or lean forward, I guarantee you Tyson Fury is going to drop that 276 or 280-pound frame on the shoulders of the much smaller Usyk. So the physicality, your, to your point, champ, that's really going to be the difference. Is Usyk going to be able to use those legs for enough rounds to avoid the physicality and the size advantage of, of Tyson Fury? Not to mention everything else he does. So not only are you dealing with the skill set of Tyson Fury, which is phenomenal, but you're dealing with this massive human being who is a real athlete as well. He may not look the part, but that guy is in great shape. He has a great gas tank, and he's very fluid and athletic. It's a really interesting matchup because, again, Usyk's never lost. We don't. There is no game plan to beat Alexander Usyk, and we've seen ways that Tyson Fury has looked susceptible, uh, especially recently. Um, you know, it makes you think of the, of the Ngannou fight, and you know, trying to compare Ngannou and and Usyk as apples and oranges. So it's it's a very intriguing matchup, and as we get closer, I'm getting more and more excited of the fight. I've been picking Tyson Fury forever, but I don't know, man. I'm starting to. I'm, I, it's really hard to bet against a guy like Usyk, who always always comes up on top. This is this is this is a, a very important fight for the for the history of the sport because the heavyweights, man, that's that's a lot of times that's what everybody's looking at. So how much is that southpaw stance going to affect Tyson Fury in this fight to the point where Usyk that gives him an advantage? I mean, listen, it, 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 we know it's not just the fact that it's a southpaw stance; it's the fact that it's a master southpaw like Usyk. Mm. I'll, I'll say this, Chris, you, Jim, you brought up a real good point. That's you know, I, my wheels are turning as we have these conversations a lot of times, and you know, you brought up a point of Fury not being a big puncher, and obviously I know that, but haven't really given it a lot of thought. One thing about Usyk, he's a great position boxer, you know, and and and, and his his sense of positioning is always immaculate, uh, great. It's part of what makes him so good. He's able to counter you. He's able to stay balanced. He's able to change the angle on you while remaining perfectly balanced so that he can punch off that different angle. Because Fury is not the biggest puncher, does Usyk's sense of positioning combine with maybe a catch-and-shoot style or maybe a sense of catching on the gloves so he can make him pay? Because Fury's sense of positioning isn't always so great. He's, he's, he makes up for, for it with athleticism and, and being a big man. I'm just trying to think of, you know, ways of the path to victory, so to speak, because we're talking about, you know, what, what can Usyk do? You know, th there's, a, there's imposing a, obviously not just the catch and shoot. Obviously, you, we need various ways of defenses throughout the fight. We don't just pick one and just use the whole fight. But is one of the ways to be effective is to that, that a catch and shoot type of style because of Usyk's sense of positioning and the fact that Fury is not a big, big puncher. Because that heavyweight, even if you couldn't, like, face it, you try to do a catch and shoot against the old Mike Tyson, see where you're going. Or yes. try to do a catch and shoot against Deontay Wilder's right hand, see where you're going, you know? But maybe Fury, who's not a, the biggest puncher, does uh, the, the catch and shoot effect, even though Usyk is a smaller guy, uh, being a former cruiserweight, could that work? Some, you know, something that just crossed my mind when when Chris was talking about it, he's not the biggest puncher, Fury. I, I question the the uh, the effectiveness of a catch and shoot because of the size difference, right? We're looking at 50, 50 plus pounds between the guys. So even though he might not be the biggest puncher, there's a lot of weight behind those shots. And listen, I mean, Tyson Fury, honestly, I I, I think his best route to victory is to make this a super ugly fight. Do the one-two and hold, one-two and glad, one-two and lean. The old Lennox Lewis when he was in those you know certain boring fights where he was basically jab right hand, tie you up, spin you, put your body weight on you. It's a big man fight. That's that's how big men fight uh, oftentimes. If Tyson Fury wants to give himself the best ability to to win this fight or the best option, the best chances to win this fight, it's to fight like a big man. And if he's starting to sit in there catching and shooting, and then Tyson's hitting him with a right hand that that catches the glove and then falls into him, leans on him, pushes him over. That's going to make uh, Usyk work that much harder and is going to put a lot more strain on the legs. I really think that it's going to come down to footwork. A lot of, like you said, positioning. Um, Usyk is a master position fighter, the way you said. He stays invisible, cuts, cuts those angles to the outside, especially to the weak side. Um, and as long as he's not standing in front of Tyson where he can drop that weight onto him or use his big body, I think he's got a real chance to, to, to befuddle Tyson at times. But just can he keep it up, man? I keep repeating. 12 rounds is a long time. Paul, you've been 12 rounds more than me. I've been 12 rounds. Man. Anyone who's never been 12 rounds doesn't know how long that, that, that contest is. It's probably one of the most difficult things in, in any sport in terms of what, what the metabolic needs. And now we're talking about big men, too. You know, Usyk, Usyk is, is the small man in this, but he's still a 225-pound man. It's a, big, it's a big athlete. So I'm, I'm really curious how this, this, this fight plays out with both of these guys in terms of what their assets are and how they're going to utilize them against each other. And one thing that you guys have been mentioning 
very quickly before we go to break there. You mentioned the size, but it's really going to be a heavyweight fight that's very technical with two very good boxers, and I think that's something to watch for come May 18th. All right, quick break here on Deep Waters. We'll continue this, this, this discussion, if I can get the words out, about the undisputed heavyweight title fight. Wednesday Night Fight. On the next Wednesday Night Fight, April 24th, Ramon Cardenas returns to Pro Box to steps up to the main event against Eduardo Ramirez. Live from the Pro Box Event Center in Plant City, get your tickets at ProBoxTV.com or take your chances at the door. Wednesday Night Fight. The next one, Wednesday Night Fights, April 24th, 8 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Ciudad de Mexico, 5 Pacific here on Pro Box TV, your boxing channel. Should be a great fight card. All right, let's talk about Anthony Joshua's place in the mix here because we've, we know that Usyk beat him twice. Tyson Fury, I think, has yet to fight Anthony Joshua. So there, is a, there might still be a place for Joshua in terms of the heavyweight titles. Is it safe to say, or should it be, we know boxing doesn't always go that route, Paulie, Safe to say that Joshua deserves to fight the winner of Usyk, Fury, or the dreaded rematch clause kicks in. Well, you know, you never know what the dreaded, yeah. dreaded rematch <laughs> the dreaded clause is. That, yeah. that, that could always be there, right? But, but um, I'd say this. The Joshua, the new look Joshua with Ben Davidson, I'm buying what they're selling. I, I really am a fan of the way Joshua's been looking lately, and I really feel like he's, he's a threat even to... The Usyk, if they were for the fight a third time, I think this is a the, a better Joshua than 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 the one that fought Usyk the, the first two times. And I thought this, the one in the rematch against Usyk was a good Joshua already. You know, um, having said that, I'm always going off script, guys. There's a guy named Philip Ergovich in the heavyweight mm, division. Yes. All right, can we start mentioning Philip Ergovich? Let's make this an actual sport, okay? We know Fury and Usyk are fighting. Joshua, I have no problem getting in the mix. I, as a matter of fact, I want to see it because I'm, I, the more I see of Joshua right now, the way he's looking, I'm a fan. I, I'm excited for it. Joshua should have to fight Ergovich in the meantime, though. Okay? Mm. Joshua Ergovich, Fury versus Usyk, winner's fight. Okay, let's make this a sport. I know it's a business. Can we make it a sport first for once? Every once in a while, make this a sport before, we make, before it's a business. It's always a business first. Make it a sport once in a while. What about Joseph Parker in the mix there? He's in the mix, but, I mean, you know, he's yeah. in the mix, but, you know, uh, Those Ergovich, are the four. Ergovich is hungry yeah. and, and determined, and he's mean in there. I mean, I mean Parker is in there, but he's already been beaten by Joshua, right. and so you can't really put him in there in that degree. And he's very good friends with Fury, so that's going to be out. I don't know. I mean, Ergovich has to get in there. Ergovich should make fun fights, I man. Ergovich yeah. is a go-getcha guy. You know what I mean? It's not like Ergovich doesn't make fun fights. I mean, there's absolutely no reason Ergovich shouldn't be in this mix besides the fact that he's dangerous without the big name. He doesn't have the big name because he's been avoided constantly and the networks haven't been pushed him into it. You know, Joshua Ergovich should happen and the winner should fight Usyk and Fury. That's uh, the winner of Usyk and Fury. That's my, that's my take. All right, Chris, what do you think about Anthony Joshua, where he fits in and what Pauly said? Man, I really was hoping that I could... I could disagree with Paulie on this one because I'm, I'm I'm back on the Joshua train too and I was a big Joshua fan for a very long time I always said like if I'm making a video game character of a heavyweight champion of the world I'm making that guy I'm I'm, turn, I'm literally building that guy he's got everything I mean he's got the look he's got the power he's got the technique um he's got the attitude or he did and he's got it back yeah I'm, I'm, I'm definitely very much back on the Anthony Joshua train um but to your point champ with the Ergovich at least he's getting busy he's fighting Dubois next and Dubois is one of those guys. He's I, I don't know if gatekeeper is a term I would really use for him now, um, you know, because uh, often that, that's that's taken as a derogatory term. But he's certainly a gatekeeper for the tip top. And you got to get past him to get to the, 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 the biggest fights. And Ergovich, his biggest fight to date was Gilles Zhang. And it was a very, very close fight and one that a lot of people thought that he lost. So, yeah, he's got that. He, he's got that win over over Zhang, which is which is great. But. I think this this Dubois fight is going to be really important for him in terms of where he goes next. If he goes out there and he washes Dubois and he does what I actually think he's going to do, I think he's going to be able to dismantle Dubois. Um, I think Irvich is very, very good and is very deserving as well. Um, but at least he's getting busy. It's not like he's, has, he, has, he has been just sitting on the outside literally through the glass looking at all these guys fighting and all this money being made. Now he's actually got a fight with a big guy and a name that people are going to recognize. And a win there really puts him into the mix. So uh, he, if he does what he's supposed to do against Dubois, I think he's got a, um, a a good standing to be 
in the mix with these guys and even even be able to step in between and get the winner of this fight. Um, uh, we'll see what that happens because obviously the power to be in the money that's to be made. But yeah, I, I, I this this new version of Joshua, like I said, man, I, I could see him beating everybody in the world. Um, when he's a con- when he's consistent, when he's locked in, when he's dialed in, when he's that guy, when he is AJ, man, he's he's something else. But we've seen him be inconsistent, and that's a funny thing about that kind of inconsistency because it's not physical. Obviously, the, the inconsistency is here, and that can come back at any time. Boxing is a funny thing, man. It takes it takes one of these, just like Mike Tyson said. Mm. Everybody's got a plan to get punched in the face. It's not even just the plan. It, it, it's it's your your everything changes. Your life changes with with certain punches. So you could always bring back the the Joshua that was really not looking good with one good shot or one bad opportunity. So um, the the consistency or the inconsistency rather of AJ uh, of Anthony Joshua has been a concern of mine. So even even though yes, I'm back on board. You know, I think it's very easy for him to revert back to that 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 Joshua, that Anthony Joshua, not the aversion of AJ like we're calling now. I say the AJ is this this Terminator. You know, the Anthony Joshua is the guy that um, you know struggled with with you know with with Andy Ruiz. But um, yeah, I, I think this I think the heavyweight division's hot, man. And I don't know, depending on how this fight goes, these damn rematch clauses. I, mm. I know there's money to be made. I know this is a business. I know these guys are are basically uh, individual corporations and they're trying to make as much money as they can. But for the good of the sport, man, there's a lot of good contenders out there. You know, champions should be fighting the best guys around. I know we don't see that a lot, but recently, heavyweight division, at least they're they're getting active. So how much has, has Ben Davison and his his presence in the corner for Anthony Joshua been a part of his, this surge and this kind of new Anthony Joshua that's becoming a serious contender once again in the mix for a heavyweight title? I think he's... Per- per- I think the pudding. Yeah, Go ahead. I, I, yeah, exactly, Jam. I, I think he's brought the best out of Joshua. I think Joshua, you know... Like you said, Cham, if you could create a action figure or a superhero or, you know, any of those, you know, terms we, we use for, you know, the specimen of, a, of an athlete or, or a boxer, Joshua's there, right? But you got to know how to bring the best out of him. And I really think the, the marriage of Davidson has done that. I, 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 I like, it's not just that he's been winning, because these are fights that he's supposed to win. Wally is supposed to beat, and Usyk is, and uh, no, Usyk, uh, and Gano, he's supposed to beat. But man, he, it's the way he did it. It's the way he did it. Very, very impressive. And two puzzling guys. You know, Valin is, is no one. No one looked good against Valin. He's a very easy. He's, he's good. Yeah. And Ngannou obviously is another puzzle. And I mean, the, the the marriage with Ben Davidson. Like I said, a lot. I think a lot of it's here. Ben Ben knows how to speak the fighters. He's he's very down to earth. He he gets what he gets it out of you. And a lot of times, I always say, but with coaching, a lot of times, especially guys with big amateur backgrounds and a lot of a lot of experience the way that Joshua has, a lot of it's just semantics. The, the, the coach has the right words at the right time to get out of their out of their charge what is necessary. And it seems like Ben and AJ have that. All right, time for a quick break here on Deep Waters. We'll continue our discussion on the heavyweights here on Pro Box TV. Wednesday Night Fight. On the next Wednesday Night Fight, April 24th, Ramon Cardenas returns to Pobox to steps up to the main event against Eduardo Ramirez. Live from the Probox Event Center in Plant City, get your tickets at ProboxTV.com or take your chances at the door. Wednesday Night Fights. Welcome back to Deep Waters. All right, Polly, top two heavyweights in the world right now. Not long ago was AJ and Wilder with with uh, Fury and Usyk creeping up. Now it's Fury and Usyk with Joshua and Ergovich creeping up. All right, Chris, top two heavyweights in the world. Yeah, it's Fury and Usyk, and they're fighting each other, so I'm a happy man. And Anthony Joshua right there on the podium if we were to go to, to three in a bronze medal. All right, that does it for Deep Waters every Monday through Friday here on Pro Box TV, your boxing channel. Take care, everyone.